we want to bring our attention down to the 25th verse of chapter 2 and verse 25. Luke chapter 2, verse 25, and it reads, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And then verse 36 says, Now there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And this woman was a widow of about 84 years, who did not depart from the temple but serve God with fastings and prayer night and day. And coming in that instant, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Uh, from these verses and surrounding texts, I want to claim for your attention today the question, can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? In our modern day courts of law, we experience and we hear many witnesses that are called sometimes to be able to make the case in defense of whoever it might be. Sometimes the case may depend on the testimony of a single witness, one individual, if you will. In the Old Testament, God established a witness system. God set up a system where that people would not just get railroaded if they <coughs> used his system. In Deuteronomy 19 and 15, it says that one witness shall not rise against the man concerning any iniquity or any sin that he commits. But, the, but by the mouth of two or three witnesses, the matter shall be established. Jesus brought that same system over into the New Testament in Matthew's Gospel uh, 18, verses 15 through 16. And as Jesus speaks, he says, Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear Take with you one or two more that by the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. In John 8 and 13, the Pharisees therefore said to Jesus, You bear witness of yourself. Your witness is not true. But Jesus says it is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. He says, I am one who bears witness of myself and the Father who sent me bears witness of me. In the Bible, we can see the testimonies of ones that agree with the testimony of the other. Jesus even sent out his disciples two by two that they might bear witness and that the witness could be established between the two of them. In our text today, Luke establishes two people, two witnesses here to tell us about the long-awaited Messiah. For years, people have been waiting on Jesus. Prophets have spoke about him, and uh, the, the, the parents had addressed those issues of what the prophets had said in their homes, in their Bible study time. 
And for years, people have been waiting to see Jesus. In the text, we find Mary and Joseph bringing Jesus to the temple to be pre presented to the Lord. Luke says, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male child who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. They were to offer a sacrifice, a, a pair of turtle doves or two pigeons, if you will. If we think about it, even in the sacrifice here, we see the connection of truth. Even in our preaching, sometimes we ask the congregation, can I get a witness? Can I get somebody that can verify what I'm talking about? Can I get somebody that identifies with what I'm saying according to the word of God? Can I get somebody that can identify with the experience that, that I'm talking about that we might have a witness? Look brings before us in this Advent season two witnesses that have been waiting on Jesus. Luke brings two people before us at the temple as witnesses to this great birth of the Savior. Listen to how the text talks about it. As we look at Simeon, Simeon was a righteous and devout man. Spirit had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. When the parents brought Jesus to the temple for dedication, Simeon took him in his arms and, and held him up, and, and Simeon had a praise for God. Mm -hmm. Simeon knew that this is what he'd been looking for, this is what he had been waiting for, that, that the Son of God would come and visit with us. In other words, God would come down and, and, and he would wrap himself in flesh and that he would visit with humanity in the flesh so that he might be here to dwell with us, to know how we feel and, and what we feel and, and why we feel what we feel that he could identify with us. But then when we look in the other part of the chapter, we see Anna, who was a prophetess. Anna was there thanking God. A lady on over in her years, 84 years old, I believe it was. But she announced to everyone who was looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem that the Messiah is here. And she had an opportunity, if you will, to, to, to experience Jesus for herself. And, and her encounter with Jesus was not something for her to keep to herself. Or we ask sometimes, can I get a witness? Because the fact is that, that we realize that our encounter with Jesus is not something that is meant to be kept to ourselves. Uh -huh. I'll be saying sometimes in the song that I said it wasn't going to tell nobody. But I, I just couldn't keep it to myself. Couldn't keep it to myself what the Lord had done for me. And so that's what we are still experiencing now, Lord, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, through the power and presence of his Holy Spirit, that he might help us to be a witness for him. Dr. Charles Spurgeon, that great evangelist and revivalist that said years ago of our witness, he said, do not stand disputing. Claim a divine mission and tell men that God says it and they are leaving. Say to him, to them that he that believeth shall be saved and he that believeth not shall be damned. Mm -hmm. And when you have done that, you have done enough. For what reason should our missionaries stand disputing with those who worship idols? Mm -hmm. Why should they be wasting their time by attempting to refute first uh, this dogma and then another dogma of heathenism. Why not just go and say, the God whom ye ignorantly worship, I declare unto you, believe me and you will be saved. Believe me not. And the Bible says that you are lost. And then having thus asserted God's words, Spurgeon says, say, leave it that. I declare it unto you. It is a thing for you to believe, not a thing for you to reason about. In other words, that God's word is not to be reasoned about, but it is to be accepted in faith that this is what God has said, and this is what God says that he will do, and this is what God says that he will not do. Can I get a witness this morning? Amen. Is there a witness in the place? God had put Simeon and Anna where they were for his own glory and benefit. Most of the time when we address this text, we address the text 
with Simeon or either with Anna by themselves. But, but when you look at it that Luke has provided for us two witnesses who talk about the same thing and about the same time that it occurs and, and that at the same place in which it occurs that Simeon is at the temple, Anna is at the temple, and they bear witness of one another, the Lord does not leave us without a witness. Uh -huh. When we think about it in life, he's placed us where we are for his benefit. We may use it to our benefit, but where we are is where God has placed us, but he placed us in this place of where we are to be a benefit to him and his glory. And what do we do? We find ourselves trying to be somewhere else, mm -hmm. doing something other than what he has called us to do or being somewhere else other than where he has placed us. He find, we find ourselves doing something other than what God has asked us to do. Mm -hmm. Can I get a witness this morning? Yeah. Yeah. Or when we think about it, my brothers and sisters, sometimes we imagine in our minds that uh, if we were in the place of this prophet or prophetess, that we would do certain things, that we would have said certain things, that we would have been bold and stood uh, like they are. But uh, because of who we are and where we are at, that um, we don't think that we are supposed to stand, but the Lord wants us to stand where we are also. Sometimes we imagine in our minds what we would do if we had money, if we had more of it. Uh, can I get a witness this morning? Uh -huh. uh, there are some things that, that, that go lacking in our lives because we don't have money. Uh, and we see all kinds of needs that people have sometimes. And we say to ourselves that if I had the money, I would do this and do that. And, uh, and sometimes we say to ourselves that if I could speak better, I would do this. If we could sing better, that we would do this. If we uh, won the lottery, that we would do this, that, or the other. Uh, but what we need to remember is the example of the poor widow who only had two mites. Uh -huh. She didn't worry about what she didn't have, but she took what she did have and put it to work for the Lord. And that's what we need to learn to do in our lives this morning, my brothers and sisters, is to learn to take what the Lord has already given us and use that to his glory. And if we take that and use that to his glory, then he will take care of the multiplication. He doesn't multiply and add and subtract like we do, but he has a strange way, my brothers and sisters, of keeping the meal barrel full. He has a strange way of not letting the oil run out. He has a strange way of allowing the, uh, the monthly bills to be made when the check comes up short. He has a strange way of being able to keep the lights on when everybody else may be in the neighborhood. In the God is not asking us to live as Simeon did. He's not asking us to live as Anna did. But he wants us to be witnesses for him. Yeah. Sometimes in life we have to think about what's going on. And, and, and this has been dwelling in my mind. And, uh, and, and, and sometimes as a part of our witness, sometimes we, we have to ask folk uh, who don't go to church. Who, folk who don't do church sometimes. We, we have to ask them sometimes, how, how you get along with no Sunday uh -huh. in your life? How, how you get along with no Bible study in your life? How do you get along with no confession of sin in your life? No fire to keep you from sinning next week. No, no fire to, to, to keep you warm and glowing, glowing when uh, the circumstances around you are as cold and dark as ice. How do you get along without some Sunday in your life? No, no Savior to talk to in the midnight hour. How do you get along in life? Sometimes we have to ask folks about that as a part of our witness because we know from our experience how we get along because we, we, we do have some Sunday in our life because we do have some Bible study in our life. We have some prayer time in our lives. Wow. And with life is God and Jesus, that we've got somebody that we can go to, a midnight friend, if you will, that in the midnight hour, yeah. that he'll get up yeah. and sleep and he'll listen to our history. Yeah. I remember those dark nights in the hospital there some time back. Those, those nightmares, if you will, those, those dark places that mm -hmm. the pain medicine would have me go into. Yeah. I would awake and still in pain, but the Sunday songs and, 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 and the Wednesday night Bible study, the, the, the morning message sometimes, the, 
the word of God. Those were things that got me through the dark yeah. hours of the night, if you will. And, um, but, and I hate to imagine what it would have been like if I had no worship experience, if I had no time to, to, to probe into God's word and let him speak to me. God here in the text had calculated the time so that Simeon and Anna could be in the temple at the right time. Is there a witness in the house today that you know that there's something that God has calculated, that God has done, that God has used in your life, that he's done it at the right time, in the right place, in the right sequence of what you need in your life? Some things in life you can't navigate for yourself. Some things in life, some things that have happened to you, some things that will happen to you in the future that only God can navigate those circumstances. And, and he's the only one that, 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 that can be a witness to what he's trying to do in your life. But then once he does what he does, then he wants you to be able to go out and tell somebody in life. He's always moving in his time frame. Or according to God's timing, according to God's judgment, Anna and Simeon were in the right place. They were in the best place. And when we think about that in life and how we serve a mighty God, we need to recognize that we are, we are born at the right time. Mm -hmm. We are living at the right time. Mm -hmm. Living in the right place. All we need to do is be a witness. Okay. As the songwriter said, just right in the corner where you are. <laughs> Simeon and Anna didn't miss the magnificent moment to be in God's service. Sometimes we, we miss those moments, my brothers and sisters, and, and, and sometimes that, that we miss them, and then later in life when we discover them, and, and, and sometimes it makes us miserable because we miss those moments in time, the opportunity to do something for the Lord. This was a magnificent opportunity to fill a service station. Anna and Simeon filled that station of servanthood like no other could. And he calls on us, my brothers and sisters, to fill our station with God's leading, with the power of his spirit. And we need to come to realize that ain't nobody that can fill that place at the door like you can. Uh -huh. Nobody can fill that place in the crown of uh, like you can. And uh, nobody can feel that place, Sean and Lenny and uh, Brother Jones, can't nobody feel that place up there like you can with God's leading uh -huh. if you accept it that way. Nobody can feel the spot on the youth council like you can. Nobody can be the daddy in the home witnessing like you can. Nobody can be the mother in the home witnessing like you can when you let God program the agenda. Nobody can tell the story better than you can. Uh -huh. I'm going to share something with you this morning. Y'all yeah, haven't realized this yet. Y'all yeah, been listening to these television evangelists and, and y'all get excited about what they tell you. Y'all get excited about what T.D. Jakes says. T.D. Jakes can bring it. He can make the book talk. When uh, you look at other evangelists out there that, that, that you know, they can stir you up. Uh, they can motivate you. And uh, you, you, you all don't know this yet. Uh, that they, but they, they, they preach and they do a whole lot better than I do. But I want to tell you something. I want to share a little secret with you this morning. If I can get a witness. Uh -huh. yeah. Wait yeah. after you say it now. Uh -huh. If I can get a witness this morning. They got better preaching abilities. They got different gifts than I have. They don't have no better gospel to preach to you than I have. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I, I might stumble and stammer sometimes, and you might not understand everything that I say. I might always not always be clear in the illustrations that I give, like uh, Brother Tony Evans. I, I, I like him, you know, I, I like what he does. That's not my gifts, but I like what he does. Uh -huh. and, and I might stumble and stammer sometimes, but Tony doesn't have any better gospel to preach to you than I do. Uh -huh. <laughs> he might come in a different way, but it's no better because it's one gospel. That's right. <laughs> Let me move on, my brothers and sisters. I, I, I told you that God has his way of placing witnesses, that he had placed Simeon and Anna at the temple at the same time, that they might be two witnesses, that, that, that it might be established 
what they were saying about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But let me move on to the next witness, if you will, as I get ready to go to my seat. If you'll remember John, the one who couldn't stop talking about Jesus, and so they figured that they would uh, come together and they would put him on an island, that they would banish him from society. And they would hush him up, if you will, by putting him on this island called Patmos. But the Lord gave John a vision, and in that vision, John shares with us two other, other witnesses that are with us. In Revelation chapter 11, John says that I was given a reed like a measuring rod and was told, go and measure the temple of God and the altar with its worshipers. But exclude the outer court. Do not measure it because it has been given to the Gentiles. They will trample on the holy city for 42 months. And I will report my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1,260 days, clothed in sackcloth. They are the two olive trees and the two lampstands stand, and they stand before the Lord on the earth. If anyone one tries to harm them, fire comes from their mouths and devours the enemies. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. They have power to shut up the heavens so that it will not rain during the time that they are prophesying. And they have power to turn the waters into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. Now when they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up from the abyss will attack them and overpower and kill them. Mm -hmm. Their bodies will lie in the public square of the great city, which is figuratively called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. Mm -hmm. For three and a half days, some from every people, tribe, language, and nation will gaze on their bodies and refuse them burial. The inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them and will celebrate by sending each other gifts because these two prophets have tormented those who live on the earth. But after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them, and they stood on their feet, and terror struck those who saw them. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here! And they went up to heaven in a cloud while their enemies looked on. And there will be two witnesses that will stand at the last days, my brothers and sisters. But those two witnesses will be killed and they'll have life put back into their bodies and they'll be invited to come on up where Jesus lives. Mm -hmm. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I came to remind us this morning that that's our hope. The Daily Walk Bible says that, that throughout the Bible, God provides his witnesses. Mm -hmm. That if you look in the beginning in the book of Genesis, that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. But when you look at Revelation, the closing of the book, he says, I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. God made two great lights in the beginning when he spoke it into creation, sun and the moon. But then in Revelation, as he closes the book out, he brings the witness says that the city does not need the sun or the moon. The Lord will be the bright and morning star. When we look at Genesis, he told that, um, Adam and Eve uh, that they would certainly die if they ate of the fruit of the vine. Of, of, of the tree of knowledge. But then when he closes it out with the witness, he said that in Revelation, he said there is no more death. Right. When, he, when we look at it, my brothers and sisters, that he told Eve in the garden that I will make your pains, uh, in birth pains, unbearable. Uh, make them very severe, if you will. But when he closes the book with the witness, he says that there will be no more pain. Right. Oh, no sorrow, no crying in glory. Then he said that cursed is the ground uh, because of the sin of man in Genesis. But it said in Revelation, no longer will there be any curse. Mm -hmm. God banished Adam and Eve from the garden. But then it declares in Revelation that they will see his face. Mm -hmm. We will see his face, my brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. That This is our hope that one day we'll get there. We shall see him face to face. Oh, yeah. That's what we are waiting for. That's what the Advent season keeps on emphasizing is awaiting. They waited on Jesus' is coming. Mm -hmm. Then they waited on Jesus being crucified and, mm -hmm. and, and being nailed to the cross to pay for your sin and my sin. Yeah. But now we are waiting on his return. Mm -hmm. We are waiting for him to break the clouds right. if you will. Right. And one of these days we don't know how soon, how long it will be. But we will be able to see him 
face to face. Oh, yeah. And folks, before we, our parents, if you will, waited before us for the coming days of freedom. They waited for the Lord's return. We are waiting for the Lord's return. And our generations coming behind us, if the Lord keep carrying, that they will wait for the Lord. It's the hope that our forefathers declared in the spiritual, that I've got shoes and you've got shoes and all of God's children have got shoes. And when I get to heaven, I'm going to take off all of my shoes and I'm going to shout all over God's heaven. Have we got a witness this morning? Anybody here this morning that can identify with what the writer is talking about, that God has his means of deliverance. Anybody got a witness this morning that the Lord is good, and not only is he good, but he's good all the time. Anybody got a witness this morning that God may not come when you want him, but he's always on the Anybody got a witness in the house this morning that the Lord has woke you up this morning and that he started you on your way and that he's the one that's been keeping you. Not just today, that he didn't just bless you once or twice, but when you look around, he's been blessing you all the way. Can I get a witness this morning? Can I get a witness this morning? The Lord is not, will not be without his witnesses. Oh, yeah. It's up to you. It's up to you. Amen. Whether or not you'll be a witness for him. Yeah. But he's not going to be without his witness. Yeah. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this time of sharing together in your word. Yeah. Pray that your word would not go out and come back void, mm -hmm. but that you would help us, Lord, to be swift witnesses mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. That you would help us to develop into that character, Lord, of always being ready as Paul admonishes us to be able to give a word for the hope that lies within us. To be able to tell others that you're the reason for this season. Yes. That you're the reason for the joy that we experience in life. That you're the reason for the hope that is within us. Yes. And we thank you and we give you glory. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we gather this morning, again, today we come to be obedient to the Lord in doing what he has asked of us.